In this video, what we want to do is take a look at catch lights within the eyes. Oftentimes, when you're working in a studio, you'll definitely see some type of catch light. In this case, we can clearly see the soft box in her eyes. Other times, you see umbrellas. Whatever the shape was of the light source, you'll see in the eye. Now, you can run into situations where you don't get this for whatever reason, or when you do get it, it's not as pronounced as you would like. Without these catch lights, the subject has kind of a lifeless appearance to it. Let me show you what I mean. If I come over here and open another image, I'll come over here and select this image, you don't see any catch lights. So what we want to do is add them. In this case, I'm not sure how the photographer got away without having catch lights. Maybe they were retouched out, but we're going to go ahead and add them back in. There's other situations as well. If I come over here and select this image, we don't have any catch lights within this photograph. And maybe it's because she was, and maybe because the picture was taken at sunset or she was in the shade more or the light source was simply behind her and we really didn't have anything pointing at her in terms of a light source into her eyes and so we don't have anything. So we have a couple different techniques that we can use to add these catch lights or enhance these catch lights. In this situation, in this particular photograph, because we have a picture that's kind of waist up, the details aren't so pronounced in our eyes. So we have a quick, easy way that we can add them in this situation. What I'd like you to do is create a new layer. After creating the new layer, zoom into her eyes. And what I want you to do is select the brush tool. B is the keyboard shortcut. We then want to make sure that the foreground color is white. If you have a different foreground color, you can press D on your keyboard to set the foreground and background colors to their defaults, then X to swap them, so white is the foreground color. Then you want to select a brush size. Depending upon the resolution of the image that you're working with would ultimately dictate the brush size, but in this case, I have a brush size of about 6 pixels. The opacity is 100%. I'm just going to click in her eye to create a white dot. And there it is. That's all you have to do. If you zoom out, it doesn't look bad at all. Maybe it's a little too white. But honestly, these catch lights sometimes are really, really bright like that. But if you feel that it's a little too bright, just drop the opacity of that layer. So I'll go ahead and do that. Drop that down a little bit. Looks completely natural. Looks good. Adding a little bit more life to this picture. So that's the quick, easy way to do it. But you may run into situations where that's not really an option. In this case, if we did that, we would have white circles and it would look a little strange. So what you can do in these situations is find an image where there is a nice catch light, like this photograph, and simply trace it out and use that shape as the catch light for that other image. So let's go ahead and do that. We can select the catch light from either the right eye or the left eye. I'm going to come over here and... I think I'm going to go with this shape here. I'm going to select the polygonal lasso tool. With that tool selected, I'm just going to trace out this catch light. It'll take a second. And once you're done, what you want to do is fill it. Now, you'll notice I have a new layer here. If for some reason you don't, go ahead and create that new layer and then fill it with white. You'll notice that white is the foreground color right now so i can use the keyboard shortcut option on the mac alt on windows delete or backspace to fill it with white then you can simply copy it to your clipboard command c or control c on windows then you can return back to that image where we didn't have any catch lights you probably want to create a new layer and then you can come in and paste it so i'll come over and paste command v or control v on windows with the Move tool selected, V is the keyboard shortcut to select that tool. Move the catch light into position. It's way too big in this case. So we can use the Free Transform tool, Command-T or Control-T on Windows. Just scale it down a little bit. Press Enter or Return once you're happy with the size. And then, in this case, we probably want to reduce the opacity a little bit. You can experiment with the blend modes, something like soft light will probably give you the best results but in this case because the color of the eye i think we're getting too many purple values here so i'm not really happy with the blending mode change so i'm going to leave it set to normal and i'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit now after reducing the opacity the catch light 
may be a little too crisp in terms of its edges. So what you can do to fix that is apply a blur filter, make sure that layer one is selected, then come over to the filter menu, and from the filter menu, you can choose blur, and let's select a Gaussian blur. We want something pretty low, like 0.5 pixels. You can drag this to the right, and if your preview is checked, you'll be able to see that change take place within the image. 1.2 is too much, so you want to be somewhere between 0.5 and 1 in many situations. Of course, all images are different. Go ahead and click OK. Once you click OK, all you have to do is duplicate this now and position this in the other eye. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key on a Windows machine, Option on a Mac, click and drag this to the right. You kind of want to position it in a similar location. And once you're happy with it, you can let go of the mouse. Let's zoom out a little bit, and you'll notice we now have those catch lights that look pretty good, and they're in the shape of a softbox. So it makes sense. Clearly, this image was taken in a studio. So that's how you can work with catch lights. One other thing that you may want to do when working with portraits is punch up some of the reflection a little bit within the eyes. So let's zoom in to her eye. And what we want to do is just add kind of like a punch of brightness to our eye to add that additional sparkle. So we're going to come over here and create another new layer. And with this layer as the active layer, you want to select the elliptical marquee tool. And with this tool selected, you want to draw, in this case, pretty much a circle. Now, eyes can vary in shape. Sometimes it won't be a circle. It'll be a little bit more of an oval. But in this case, a circle makes sense. And you want it positioned in a way that occupies the majority of the interior of the brighter colors. You'll see the darker green here in this case. You want to preserve that. So keep that selection off that darker edge if you can. Then you want to fill this with white. Again, white is my foreground color. I'll hold down the Option key on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and I'll press the Delete or Backspace key on the keyboard. So we've filled this with white. Go ahead and deselect it, Command D or Control D on Windows. We don't need this entire circle. So let's select the rectangular marquee tool. We want to select about three quarters of it and then just delete it to get rid of it. Go ahead and deselect that, Command D or Control D on Windows. Then what we want to do is activate a selection of this shape. And we can do that by holding down the Command key on the Mac, Control on Windows, and clicking on the Layer thumbnail here of Layer 1. That will load that content as a selection. I still have a selection tool active. Because I have a selection tool active, I can move the selection. I'm just going to use the up arrow key on the keyboard to do that. And then with just a portion of it selected, I'm going to press the delete or backspace key on the keyboard. And this is going to create kind of a crescent shape. That's what we're looking for. Go ahead and deselect this. This is still too pronounced, but we're almost done. What we want to do now is blur this. So again, we can come up to the filter menu. And from the filter menu, we can choose blur. And we're going to go with a Gaussian blur. This time, we're going to pump up the radius to somewhere around three pixels or so. We really want to kind of blur it out quite a bit. I think that looks good. Go ahead and click OK. After clicking OK, we want to change the blend mode. Let's go ahead and try something like overlay. And so now that's really bringing up a lot of brightness. We could dial this effect back a little bit by dragging the opacity slider down, but let's keep it punched up for right now. And then I want you to choose the Move tool and duplicate this to the other eye. Again, hold down the Option key on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and drag it to the right eye. And once you let go of the mouse, we have that same brightness there. Let's zoom out. And you can see what a difference this makes within the eyes. If I turn off these two layers, this is the before and this is the after. Now it is a little bright, so let's go ahead and reduce the opacity a little bit on both of these layers. Somewhere in the 50% range is probably good. But again, it really makes a huge difference within the eyes. It adds a lot of brightness. It's just that punch of light source almost that adds that additional life to the image. So again, this is what it looked like without it. This is what it looks like with it. So there you go. Those are a couple tips when it comes to working with the catch lights and light sources within the eyes.